We are the hub for news, results, and CEO interviews focusing the junior commodities sector. We provide market analysis and perspective that will help position you for solid returns. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Stock Talk. Uh, it's great to see you, Austin. Uh, we want to talk about uh, some batteries. So we're going to talk about not all batteries, but we're going to talk about the lithium iron battery uh, and kind of put it towards the context of what we're, we're seeing out there. Um, and, and especially across, there's a, a great document in the U.S. called the National Blueprint for Lithium Batteries 2021 to 2030. Um, and what's interesting with this, amongst other things, uh, is that they have near-term and uh, long-term objectives that they w- want to meet. Uh, that not only include, you know, kind of leadership in technology, but the promotion of STEM education and kind of upgrading the workforce uh, into this, uh, like, skilled labor, uh, is they're really focusing on developing cobalt-free cathode materials, uh, and as well as, you know, looking, you know, make uh, better energy density, better safety and stability, uh, and better cost alignments with creating uh, lithium-backed batteries. Uh, Of course, there's other steps they're taking, a standardized kind of unit they want to find up across the, the platforms, which are the, the main ones they're going to focus on, uh, which will be key. I mean, we, of course, we see the lithium ion. Everyone knows those from Tesla. Uh, the lithium iron is a little bit less known, but I'll, we'll get into that quite quite soon here. Uh, and they're, they're looking, you know, for more IP, you know, strategies and whatnot. And we can see this, that they're, they're developing this kind of whole vertical chain. And uh, that means they need to, to look for materials. They need to look for technology and R&D. And they need to kind of build that, uh, accelerate those programs. And we know with the uh, Inflation Reduction Act that uh, that's, you know, they're spending money to do this, uh, which yeah. kind of leads us into this whole talk about uh, lithium iron yeah and it's it's a a smart move from a perspective of you know if you're going to develop kind of what you're saying this this big supply chain of lithium based batteries that's going to come from a more you know at home supply base right as opposed to using different different avenues if you're north america you can look and say hey look we've got a lot of access to lithium at home and i know we're going to jump into some different different areas but we've got access to it at home and an opportunity to really build out this this massive supply chain to support this industry so it's good to see them making a step and laying out this kind of framework and they've got these these five goals that kind of point to the direction of how they want to uh sort of lay out this process and move forward with it uh yeah and it, it's the acknowledgement of most people see in the markets that lithium is has done exceptionally well uh people you know are paying quite a bit of attention to those kind of stocks uh and also you know you use the reason why, say, a cobalt is exceptionally well understood and known is because environmentalists point out that the, the major amount comes from the Congo or, say, nickel from Indonesia, uh, that that causes uh, a lot of consternation uh, because it's it's certainly not ESG. Let's just like flat out. It's not even remotely close to ESG. And, uh, you know, companies have been able to use metals and minerals from these countries uh, to date. Now, yeah. uh, who knows how much longer that'll be because the countries are, are at least we'll assume they're going to take it seriously that they want to do things environmentally friendly uh, and with some proper uh, care uh, taken not only to the people uh, socially and the governance wise. So that opens up, okay, uh, for a lot of people is where are you going to find all the cobalt? Where are you going to find all the nickel for the lithium ion? Uh, well, what we've seen developing over the last year and a half uh, are car companies looking towards uh, another solution. And b- believe me, if you start looking at batteries, there's a lot of batteries out there. It's hard to keep up to date with uh, the new technologies developing. And some people might get overwhelmed and say, uh, I don't even know which one I'm supposed to bet on. Uh, yeah. That's where I think uh, lithium iron has has made a case for itself, uh, not only in recent news, but also some of the news from the past year, year and a half. Yeah, the, it's interesting to see, and, and this is what we kind of wanted to dive into, is you've seen some major car manufacturers, Tesla, Ford, and Mercedes are going to be the ones that we're going to talk about today, that have all made a, a notion that they're going to shift in this direction. So 
Ford's looking at it for the Mustang Mach E. You have Mercedes is looking at it for the uh, EQA, and I believe it's the EQB are the two models that they're looking at putting it into. And Tesla has said as well in their latest kind of investor update that this is the the direction that they're going to lean into. So you know, it's like you kind of said, it can be a little overwhelming for people to look at and say, "Hey, which of these batteries am I going to bet on?" And, and don't get me wrong, every single one of these you know battery ideas has pros and cons to it, but. When you see companies like Ford, Mercedes, and Tesla leaning in a certain direction, that's kind of a good indicator as far as I'd be concerned that, hey, this might be the direction the market's looking at moving. Yeah, I mean, other car companies like Hyundai have started as well. Uh, but to see those big brands like the Volkswagen, the Mercedes, the Teslas moving is pretty impressive. And the way I kind of liken it, and I'm not going to get terribly technical here, is uh, they are, uh, they're more, much more fire resistant, so they're a bit safer. Uh, they can be a, a lot more environmentally friendly. They don't have as much distance though. So I kind of yeah. liken this to being, if you are looking at cities, uh, they're going to play a great role because I mean, you don't use, use a lot of horsepower. You don't, you shouldn't be reaching top speeds too often and you, you should be able to, to charge regularly. Uh, so yeah. these types of ones will be perfect for large cities. And then of course you're, your more expensive, more expensive lithium ion battery cars will be for longer trips and, and longer uh, travel as well, because it performs uh, the performance factor is a lot greater and the power output in those are also much greater. Yeah, it is for sure. And that, that's that's the kind of the, the important thing to think about it. And then when you see with some of these companies making these moves, someone like Ford is actually kind of putting their money where their mouth is with it as well. And investing, I believe it's $3.5 billion into constructing this. It's going to be the first kind of automaker backed LFP battery plant. They're building it in Michigan. Uh, I think that's going to open sometime in the next three years here. So they're actually really leaning into this heavily and, and banking on, on these batteries and specific to the tune of 3.5 billion, which I mean, even to a company like Ford, isn't a, isn't a small chunk of cash. No. And that's, what's important to see is not only to think of where we getting our materials is that are they building the gigafactories to support it? So seeing this step uh, is, is, is excellent. I see it's another car company who's actually going to, uh, build out a plant. Now, naysayer is going to point out that CATL or cattle, uh, uh, is a, is, is a Chinese backed, uh, technology company with their lithium phosphate battery technology. I think, you know, that's, that uh, that'll cause some consternation. Sure. But I, I don't think it's going to dissuade anyone from the fact that it's going to move forward. I mean, the, the lithium phosphate battery is, is moving forward. And in part, uh, I mean, I, we look at this, uh, I think it's called Fortune Business Insights have uh, stated that they expect the projected growth to be uh, from 10.12 billion US dollars to roughly 50 billion by 2028, uh, which is a, a huge growth. And that's on the basis that it is much more superior uh, and much less heat is produced. So it's it's fire safety protocols are, are much better. Uh, the performance is well understood. It's a, it's environmentally friendly because you don't have to uh, recycle a lot of these harmful metals. It's non-toxic. You know, the cobalt uh, is, is quite toxic. Uh, and it is a low-cost battery. So this can bring the price down for people to be able to afford it. And that's a big point. If you want adoption of, of new technology, price point, that's a big factor. And there's lots of other factors, but those are just some of the key ones that will help to try to drive this uh, – this process forward. Well, when you think about the the amount of money the average person is spending on a car, the price point becomes a huge factor. I mean, it's a it's a huge factor as to why not more people have jumped into Teslas. I would say if the if the price of a Tesla was ten to fifteen thousand dollars cheaper, I think we'd see a lot more Teslas on the road. I don't think that's a, a crazy statement to make. So the the fact that this becomes now, I mean. We're, we're maybe being a little bit optimistic and saying, hey, because the materials are cheaper, they're, they're, they might make the price a little bit more manageable for people. But in theory, that's that's the way that it should trend and it should go. Yes. And I mean, the other thing to keep in mind, too, that you can use this technology. There's companies working on it for residential application as well. So new lithium iron phosphate batteries can be used for solar. Uh, and that could be quite uh longer term here a, a game changer as well it's something to just kind of keep in mind it's we're not just talking about the ev space the electric vehicle space uh this has applications in other ways uh and that's what keeps us uh so excited about it but it begs the question okay well where, what's phosphate 
And, and if you've been yeah. following us, you know, we talk about fertilizer. We've talked about uh, phosphate before. Uh, you have to find not only phosphate, uh, which is used for fertilizer for food. And I think most people realize we're having a bit of a food crisis. You need to find high grade phosphate. Uh, so the high grade phosphate is what's required in order to make uh, the phosphoric acid. That's what you're going for is this phosphoric acid. You need high purity uh, phosphate in order to even make that, that phosphoric acid. We're not going to get too much into details about the chemistry or how that process works. We're actually going to reach out to, uh, to uh, First Phosphate, actually. Their website has a wealth of knowledge on it and yeah. have them walk us through uh, more of the specifics and details as to how this process works. But we just want to get people comfortable with where does this come from? Uh, it's a type of igneous rock also that makes it more environmentally friendly because you need to consider if you're going to do an environmentally friendly electric car, you have to make sure as well that each step of the way up, up across that vertical supply is also environmentally friendly. Yeah. And, and, and also when it's that, that cleaner kind of uh, igneous rock that uh, it has the kind of low sulfur levels that you're looking at, that's what produces the best LFPs as well, which is another thing to think about. Like that's, it's that high quality, very high grade rock that you need to be uh, utilizing in these batteries. And, and you mentioned a company like First Phosphate, that's what they're looking at. That's what they're targeting. And, you know, we have a great interview out with them that came out this week. We have an article as well on our website that I encourage people to go take a look at and see the IPO has done very well out of the gate. It's been very promising to look at in the market. So that's a company that we're definitely flagging as saying, all right, they're, they're really onto something. And like you said, you go to their website, they break it down in, in a very clean and articulate kind of way of, of how this all works, what the process is, what their vision is for how it's going to grow and the, and the path forward. And, and one of the, the, the things that, I mean, uh, has really driven this story very quickly is that it, they signed an MOU with Preon. And they are the global leader in purified phosphoric acid production. So that's that's what's such an impressive feat at this, not only at this stage, uh, that sends a good signal to the market that this company looks to be vertically integrated to solve this problem, uh, to feed into, to me, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, building a plant in Michigan <laughs> with Ford, that's not very far away from Quebec. Uh, yeah. We look at all the supply chain and try to you know, figure out how are some of these companies or how is the U.S. going to supply itself with lithium? How are they going to get all the other materials they are going to require in order to build this? Never mind Canada. Uh, and we yeah. hear, you know, whispers of, of different provinces maybe getting a gigafactory here, there and everywhere else. And I think we're going to see stuff over the next six months, a year, as they start applying money uh, a little bit by the federal government of Canada, but mainly the U.S. who's driving this uh, strategy forward. And they're going to be looking to companies that are capable, that have yeah. the right assets, the right properties, and the right projects. And uh, that's why we feel strong when we see this kind of come together. And you know, once again, it's making a deal with a partner like Preon. Uh, that's that's very. It, it adds a lot of credibility. Let's just say. Yeah, it absolutely does, and it and it shows a, a kind of a, an ambition to come out of the gate kind of with with this in mind as well is very good and then like you're saying the u.s defense department's activated a massive budget to look at and we know that we know they've been looking at tons of different companies in canada and in the united states to kind of channel this investment into so it'll be very interesting to see where that goes and i think the companies that have the strongest vision and strategy for where they're going to go are going to kind of rise to the top and become the most attractive options for that level of government investment uh so there's a number of of major companies i mean uh prey on is certainly one of the largest for sure, but also Nutrien is, is another one you'll see. You, you've yeah. noticed the name because of fertilizer, but they're also a phosphoric acid producer, uh, as well as ICL and Inifis. Uh, so these are some interesting companies to keep in mind. And so once again, just reiterating that that deal with uh, Preon is, is, is very key. It's a catalyst to move forward and help solve some of these problems that we were all trying to solve. Yeah, it is for sure. And it, it sets them up really to move move forward very nicely. It's, it's, it's engaging in a market and putting putting yourself out there in a good way to say, look, here's what we have. We know that the the quality of the of the rock that we have and what we can produce now, let's get it out, let's get it to market, let's let's put it into uh into use and, and really get things rolling. And that's what you're gonna have to see in order to have, you know, massive battery production to meet the kind of 
electric goals that are out there. And the more that we continue to see these gigafactories being built, the more that we see different automakers jumping in to secure their own supply of it. I think that's really exciting and, and it trends in the right direction. Yeah, and I just want to reiterate, uh, just to close things up, we're going to reach out to John Pasolacqua, who is the CEO and a director over at First Phosphate, so he can walk us through how do you beneficiate the rock, the steps towards creating phosphoric acid, and that whole supply chain, because there's value added as you take each step and you, you know, you work with the chemistry to, to lift it up to, uh, it has to be purified into a grade that is very specific for batteries. So we'll have him help us walk us through exactly what that looks like. Uh, but we just want to, once again, remind people, where else are you going to look to get a pure play uh, into, into solving this problem and who's going to supply this growing demand that I think everyone is starting to kind of put together. This, this is happening. Yeah, that is for sure. And so like we said, we encourage people to check out the, the first first phosphate interview that we had there. Give the article a read, dive into the company, check out their website. They've got some great material on there to look at as well. And and continue to keep an eye on what some of these other automakers are doing as well. And what, what different strategies are going to have moving forward, because it's a very interesting, very fascinating sector that is only going to, I think, pick up and gain traction over the next you know year, year and a half here as we move forward. Excellent. Well, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Send us some uh, emails if you have any questions. We'd love your feedback. Thanks, everyone. Take care and have a great weekend.